So in today's video, I am going to be previewing at Northampton Town versus Bradford City. Then in the second part of today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys my game week at 44 League 2 score predictions. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could hit 70 likes on today's match preview, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 7,000 subscribers, so please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Let me know your score predictions down in the comment section down below and what would your start 11 be for this one. It's going to be a very, very tough game. We've got three games to go. A lot of teams still only have two games to go, but this one is probably the hardest out of the three for me because Northampton still have something to play for. Then we have Crew and Mid-Table and obviously Orient who have already been crowned champions, but they're no mugs. They recently beat Mansfield during the week, but Northampton are a fantastic side. Despite all the injuries that they've got, they're still performing. I think if they win... I think all they need to do is win or if they draw and every other one else drops points and they are promoted. So they'll certainly be looking for the three points in this one. They turned us over completely in the reverse fixture. They absolutely battered us from minute one to 90. We didn't show up in that game. They capitalised on that and they didn't even have Sam Hoskins in that game as well. So this one is going to be a very tough one. Make sure to drop a like on there for me. Subscribe if you are new as well. And let's get into it. Starting out then with the current Skybet League 2 table. My team, Bradford City, we currently sit seventh in the table. After 43 games, we've got 19 wins 15 draws, 9 defeats, 56 goals scored, 38 goals conceded which leaves us on a positive 18 goal difference and 72 points. Our last couple of games then have been a draw, a loss, a win a win and a draw. Them last couple of games then being a 2-2 draw at home to Gillingham, a 1-0 defeat away at Swindon Town a 3-0 win away at Rochdale a 3-1 win at home to Sutton United and a 0-0 draw away at Crawley Town we've dropped 5 points over our last 2 games. If we'd have won both of them games we'd be sat on 77 points so that would leave us 2 points away from 3rd, 3 Three points away from second with a game in hand and obviously Northampton still to play. It's so annoying how we've thrown the season away really in the last two games. We probably are going to have to settle for the playoffs. We're currently seven points from third. So all Stevenage really need is two draws and that puts them really out of touching distance from us in my opinion. All they really need to do, though, is win one of them games. If you compare that, though, to Northampton Town, they currently sit second in the table. After 44 games, they've got 22 wins, 14 draws, 8 defeats, 60 goals scored, 40 goals conceded, which leaves them on a positive 20 goal difference and 80 points. The last couple of games, then, been a win, a win, a draw, a win, and a loss. Them last couple of games, then, been a 3-1 win at home to Harrogate Town, a 2-1 win away at Sutton United, a 0-0 draw away at Carlisle, a 2-1 win at home to Gillingham, and a 3-0 defeat away to Newport County. That one seems to have slipped my mind. I genuinely had no idea that that game happened but I'm sure at that time on the 7th of April when Bradford City played away at Crawley so that was Good Friday actually yeah that was a not a great day for us because we didn't really capitalise on Northampton Town's poor result there but now we're going to get into the team that I would go with if I was Mark Hughes. So as always I am recording this preview before all the information has come out about injuries and updates and all that sort of stuff so I'm basing it off the fact what we've heard of over the last couple of weeks and all that sort of stuff. In my opinion I would go with a 4-3-3 formation instead of playing with a number 10 I'd rather play with a holding midfielder and two number eights because I think you've got to be a bit more defensive away from home against Northampton Town. Potentially we go back to the diamond as well but with how influential Scott Banks has been over the last couple of games I think you've got to have him on the wing so in my opinion we should go with a 4-3-3 formation. In goal for me I would go with Harry Lewis. Pretty mixed game in my opinion against Gillingham because his shot stopping was absolutely fantastic. He saved us on numerous occasions from the game really being embarrassing but his distribution especially in that first half was absolutely terrible and we're seeing more and more mistakes creep into Harry Lewis's game over the last last couple of weeks really but in terms of the actual stop, shot stopping he's getting better and better at that because he's absolutely fantastic that diving header save from Tom Nichols the long range shot from Tom Nichols as well late on in that second half were absolutely outstanding it's just such a shame how we somehow managed to concede two goals because you can't really do anything about either of them maybe he could do better with a second one but I think a lot of people from Bradford City side complaining about Lewis being fouled saying that I think it was Max Aim who was holding him throughout the whole game and the referee just wasn't seeing it and neither was the linesman which is really really poor from the officials but obviously Lewis has been outstanding this season so he should remain in goal in my opinion. Into the back four then at right back I would go with Brad Halliday pretty steady away solid game against Gillingham our right side is much more creative than our left side in my opinion although Liam Rydog did get the assist for the first goal in at the last game. Halliday's been really really good at so far this season defensively solid decent going forward as well so for me he should start at right back obviously Luke Hendry is going to be out for probably the remainder of the season with that calf injury. Into the two centre backs then at first I would bring in Matty Platt I called for it in the last game 
game before Gillingham. I was calling for him to come in for that when he didn't. Critchlow started again and Critchlow had an absolute nightmare. He's had two games in a row now where he's come back into the side and Critchlow has looked really, really poor. And Matty Platt is a no-nonsense type centre-half. He's not going to be faffing around with the ball and he's just going to get it out of the stadium. And when he has played so far this season, he has been pretty solid. He has had a few shaky games recently, but you know what you're going to get with Matty Platt, whereas Critchlow is either an 8 or he's a bit of a 6. There's no real in-between, whereas Matty Platt, I think he's always a consistent, solid 7. And at this stage in the season, you need consistency. So I will partner Matty Platt with Sam Stubbs. Now, I can't really tell you much of what Sam Stubbs did against Chilliam. It was just kind of, again, a bit similar to Halliday, a bit of a steady away, solid-ish performance. Neither of the goals are his fault completely. And he's been outstanding since coming in from Exeter in January. I think, in my opinion, probably deserves a new contract. If he can keep up this form, he certainly get one at the end of next season when obviously his new contract, uh, his current contract does expire. At left back, I've gone with Liam Rydalk. Again, I've been calling for him to be dropped over the last few games, but against Gillingham, I thought he had a pretty decent game defensively. It looked pretty solid, to be fair, offensively as well in that second half looked absolutely brilliant in the, you know in the first half he, when he was linking up with Thierry Nevers it's just I mean, that's got to be one of the weakest left sides in the league. But second half, obviously, puts a great ball in for Andy Cook just a few minutes into the second half. Was getting forward, getting balls into the box. And he's got the ability to do it. I think he just needs to trust himself a little bit more. And the team needs to trust him more. Because when he goes forward, obviously, someone else needs to cover for him. And if we can have that understanding, he can certainly put good crosses into the box. It might take him two, three, four crosses to put a good one into the box. When they do go good, Andy Cook only needs really a half chance to score. So that's my back four. Halliday, Platt, Stubbs and Rydalg. In to the three central midfielders and as the more holding midfielder I have gone with Adam Clayton we saw him being involved in the matchday squad on Saturday against Gillingham but wasn't able to make the bench which I thought was a bit strange because we need his experience at this stage in the season especially away from home we've looked a bit I don't really know what the right word is, but we've looked sometimes in that midfield a little bit open because as much as Smold and Gilead have been brilliant over the last couple of weeks and months, I think you need someone else in there. And Walker, for me, hasn't really done it all season. So I'd like to see Clayton at the base of the midfield. Either side of him, first I would go with Smold. Again, fantastic against Gillingham. He's getting better and better. Really looks like a Bradford City captain. He was absolutely brilliant against Gillingham. A solid 7.5 maybe out of 10. And I would obviously go with Gilead as well. Gilead, again, been brilliant over the last few weeks. I was giving him a lot of criticism at the start of the season but now I've got to give him a lot of praise because offensively he's looking better and better the way he carried the ball forward for our first goal where I think he drives from inside our half or it might have been from around the halfway line drives forward past two or three Gillingham players he finds Nevers Nevers plays it into Rydog ball in Andy Cook heads it into the back of the net we need more of that from Gilead his energy and legs will be very crucial in a game like this so let's see a midfield three of Smallwood Clayton and Gilead into the front three then on the right wing I would go with Scott Banks I mentioned it earlier but this man has to play he's on absolute fire at this moment in time I was unlucky really not to get an actual goal contribution in the last game because in that first half he was the only player who really came away from the game with any credit he always looks confident he always wants the ball looks to take on his mind he's not just going on his left foot now he can also deliver on his right foot wins the penalty as well he does very well to I wouldn't say buy the penalty because he just gets kicked straight in the hip doesn't he so it's a blatant penalty and fingers crossed we can see another good performance from Scott Banks in this one up front I have gone with Andy Cook obviously 29 goals now in all competitions 26 in the league he didn't win league two player of the year though Northampton Town Sam Hoskins did I'm not going to make any further comment about that all I'm going to say is look at the goals per minute ratio of both players goals per minute not goals per game goals per minute that's all I'm going to say 29 goals the man's been outstanding this season back on a score sheet give him half a chance and he's probably going to score it so he needs to start once again and I'm sure he'll be fired up for this one he'll want to prove everyone who didn't vote for him as player of the year that he does deserve it and he shows up in these big games on the left wing I've gone with Emmanuel Osadibe now I don't think he's had a start since the opening day of the season where he did obviously suffer with his injury but I can't watch Thierry Nevers try play football anymore I can't watch Dara Costello try play football anymore Harry Chapman's out for the season we don't really have many other options apart from that obviously Aboisa still currently out injured as well with a hamstring injury so Osadibe came on on the left wing against Gillingham at the weekend as well before we changed the formation and in my opinion he's kind of the best of the options at this moment in time and I'd like to see him get a start see what he can do because he does provide a bit of flair a bit of trickery and hopefully he can create something on the bench then for me that I'd leave Colin Doyle Romney Critchlow Talaji Bola Ryan Easter Dion Pereira Jamie Walker and Matt Derbyshire which means the players who would miss out would be Heath Richardson Luke Hendry Oscar Threlkeld, Timmy Odessina, Kieran Kelly, Harry Chapman, Thierry Nevers, Aboisa, Dara Costello and Verden Oliver. I'm not too sure what the situation is with Oliver at this moment in time. It was my understanding he would be back available for the game against Gillingham but didn't even make the squad. So I think if he's fit, you need him to be on the bench at least as an option. So I'm not really too sure what is going on with Verden Oliver. Now then let's get into my game week 44 League 2 score predictions. Starting out then with AFC Wimbledon versus Tranmere Rovers. I'm going to back Tranmere for a 2-0 away win. Carlisle United versus Salford City. I think finishes in a 
1-1 draw. Crawley Town versus Walsall FC. Crawley just need a point or Harrogate, not Harrogate, Hartlepool to drop points to secure their safety in League 2 next season. I think they do win this game though with a 1-0 win. Crew Alexandra versus Swindon Town. I think Swindon win this one 2-1 and they get back to winning ways after midweek disappointment against Stevenage. Doncaster Rovers versus Colchester United. I think finishes in a 3-1 away win for Colchester. Doncaster in free fall at this moment in time. Gillingham FC versus Newport County. I think that's a comfortable 2-0 home win for the Jills. Hartlepool United versus Barrow AFC. I think finishes in a 1-1 draw and that would obviously confirm Hartlepool's relegation down to the National League. Hartlepool need to win both of their games. Crawley need to lose both of their games and I think there needs to be a swinging goal difference as well. If Hartlepool are to stay up when with two games to go, I think that's very, very unlikely. Leighton Orient versus Stockport County I think finishes in a 2-1 home win for Orient. Mansfield Town versus Harrogate Town I think finishes in a 3-1 home win for the Stags. Northampton Town versus Bradford City I think finishes in a comfortable 3-1 home win for the Cobblers. Like what it was in the reverse fixture, I think Cobblers are going to absolutely walk all over us in this one. Rochdale AFC versus Sutton United finishes in a 2-1 home win for the Dale in my opinion. And finally Stevenage FC versus Grimsby Town I think finishes in a 1-1 draw. I think Stevenage are going to struggle in this game but I still think they'll definitely have enough to get over the line and get promoted into Skybet League 1. But anyway, that is where I'm going to leave it for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 70 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are on the road to 7,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so and it does massively help out. Let me know down in the comment section down below your score prediction for this game and what would your starting 11 be as well. It's going to be a very, very tough one. Three points would be absolutely absolutely massive I just can't see that coming with the form of both teams with how inconsistent and poor we've been really over the last couple of matches I just can't see anything other than a cobbler's win make sure as well to check out my second channel the link to that is down in the description down below we are on the road to a thousand subscribers over there so please make sure to go over and subscribe if you haven't already thank you very much for watching today's video have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all very soon for another one peace